There have been recordings of your first band, The White Flowers, that have been put out in the last few years. Do you do you like any of them? No, I don't. <laughs> I mean, I only like I like to listen to it. It was a very nice time. We, you know, we had a really good time. Yeah. But I mean, everything we've done. I mean, Wildflowers, and even the first Soft Machine album was so amateurish and so lacking in any kind of professional guidance that it's really embarrassing to hear. But the um. But there were ideas, and particularly like in the first Soft Machine album, even though it's sort of, I think it's, I'm sure other, the other members of the group think it is too, um, that it's embarrassingly um, amateur. There's still some nice ideas, you know, there's still some little bits that other people have used ever since, and ways of treating rhythms and uh, phrasing and stuff like that. that people mm -hmm. and if we uh, had been lucky enough to have a good director or producer, you know, we might have um, gone on to something. Well, we just didn't get there, so that's mm -hmm. the end of that story. So do you think it, it should have been more square or more? Less, I, less really experimental don't know what, I just think if it, if we, as I said, if we'd had good direction, mm -hmm. had someone who could have taken hold of what it was, because it was pretty chaotic. It was pretty. You know, everybody, was, we were all just full of ideas all the time and likely to change anything at any moment. And we never really found, although we found people who liked what we did, we never found anyone who was able to do anything with it. You know, like take it in hand and say, look, this is how this sound should be. And that's really the story of it. Are you proud of anything Soft Machine did uh, outside the studio? Some memories of live oh, yeah. gigs. Some of, the, some of the gigs we did, especially in the States, um, there were some really magic moments. I would love to have had some live recordings. Maybe somebody has them somewhere. Yeah, I have one. Yeah. yeah. The Soft Machine? Yeah. What? Three, three years ago. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. I'd just love to hear it just to see. I'm sure it's really chaotic. Really. But um, the thing was that what you don't get on, on the albums is, is that you. Sometimes you create an intensity, kind of magic, that when you hear it back in the morning, uh, you think that's you know not very good at all, really. Mm -hmm. But when it's there, it's spontaneous and it happens, and you get you get a good reaction, and, and that's all that matters. Do you think that there was a good and working combination of musicians, of machine? From Potentially, it was. I mean, yeah. it was because it was very different people. Very different people, but I mean that was what. That was attractive, you know, that was nice, I like that. But we didn't have, you know, there were, we had no one to organize the sound we had or to look after it and make sure that what was coming out in the front sounded good. All we, all we did was just go on stage and twiddle the knobs on the amplifiers and hope something would happen. You know. But the, imp the impression one gets, for instance, from Ratledge's uh, organ playing is that there was an element of aggression and not wanting to sound nice, actually wanting to make noise, ugly noises sometimes. Were you into that? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I, I was never into particularly making ugly noises. Um, au contraire, I was into m m melody. And uh, I didn't like the freeform things as much as the others did. I was much more into melodic and nice, sexy rhythms. You know. That's really my idea. Um, I just think that it, uh, the combination we could have been so much better had it, had it been um, directed either by ourselves or by somebody on the outside. But we didn't. We just really didn't think about it. We didn't really care. But I don't think any of us took it seriously enough. You know, we didn't think this is going to be. This is what our lives are going to be about. Mm -hmm. This is something that we just happened to fall into. We started playing, you know, as friends, and then suddenly we were on stage and. And we never really made a, a conscious decision to to sound professional or appeal to the public. Just uh, you know, we got onto the Jimi Hendrix tour simply because we were the same management, and I think Hendrix happened to like us because we were weird. And uh, but that was it. You know, we were just thrown in there like we were just little amateur musicians from Canterbury. Mm -hmm. That's all. You know, we'd never done a never had a proper sound check or had anybody to deal with, you know, anybody w to When you hear people saying, Soft Machine changed my life, how do you react? Do you think they are crazy or...? 
Um, Stefan said that it, it was a landmark group. I don't know because um, anything can change your life. It doesn't have necessarily have to be that you know professional or. It's nice to know that. I hope it changed whoever it was for, for the better. Mm -hmm. um, it's not to do with the, the content of what you have or or how good it is or anything. It's just something that happens to hit someone at the right time in the right place.